I have the pleasure to introduce our new headmaster, Dr. Andy Martiri. Dr. Martiri graduated from Princeton University with a degree in politics. He earned his master's degree from Johns Hopkins University and his doctoral degree from Penn. He worked in many roles at his alma mater, the Gilman School, before becoming the upper school head at the Ranney School in New Jersey. He has spent the last nine years as the headmaster of the Calvert School, another school he attended through the eighth grade, which was in Baltimore, which is in Baltimore, Maryland. And so I want to give a warm Kincaid welcome to our new headmaster, Dr. Andy Martiri. It's a pleasure and an honor to speak here this morning to help kick off the school year and to be the new headmaster for Kincaid. I am grateful for the opportunity to work here and to get a chance to work with students, teachers, and staff members in all three divisions of the school this year and in the years ahead. You have a lot of information coming at you this morning and this week, so I want to just say a few things before you head off to your first day of class. All right, first of all, I'm going to ask you all to do something. When I say so, not now, not now, wait for the signal, not now, but when I say so, I want you to stand if you are a new student or if you were ever a new student here, ever, and if you are a new employee or if you were ever a new employee. So again, not yet, but if you are a new student or you were ever a new student, if you are a new employee or if you were ever a new employee, go ahead now and stand. Okay, thank you. You can be seated, thanks. Okay, that was obviously everyone. And if you didn't stand, we might need to chat afterwards. Uh, the reason I asked us all to stand is I want everyone to remember that we were all new here once. I'm obviously brand new this year. And with being new comes some degree of nervousness. My family and I have been treated very, very well as we have transitioned into Kincaid. And I would like all of our new students and new employees to be treated exactly the same way. I think you can tell a lot about a community by how it welcomes and integrates new members. So let's make sure that we are not just welcoming, but also helpful. And let's make sure that we go out of our way, both figuratively and literally to see if someone needs help. The second thing I wanted to say is that I want you to see me as a resource, as someone who can help you reach your goals and someone who along with your teachers, advisors, coaches, and deans can be a support and a facilitator. If you ever want to talk, just shoot me an email or swing by my office and see Mrs. Barnes and she can set up a time for us to meet. I'm also going to try to be out and about as much as possible so we can have it so we can have impromptu meetings at the cafeteria or down at the gym. I want to tell you a story about a lesson that I heard in assembly in a gathering like this when I was a student in high school at Gilman in Baltimore. I was about 15 years old and it was 1986 and I was either a freshman or early in my sophomore year when this assembly happened. The headmaster at Gilman at the time was a great man, and he still is a great man in his early to mid-80s now, named Reddy Finney. Outside of my family, Mr. Finney had the greatest influence on me growing up, and I still have the benefit of his advice and wisdom. He has supported me at every step along the way over the last 30 years since I started at Gilman, and we just traded emails last week, as a matter of fact. The backstory on Mr. Finney is this. He graduated from Gilman in 1947, receiving the highest student award at graduation. He then went on to Princeton, where he was the first person in the history of the National Collegiate Athletic Association, NCAA, the first one, to be both first team All-American in both football and lacrosse in the same year. That feat has only been replicated by one other person, Hall of Fame running back Jim Brown who played football and lacrosse 
in college at Syracuse. Mr. Finney, in fact, had a chance to be a three-sport All-American, but he could not defeat a wrestler on his own team, Brad Glass, who went on to win the national championship in wrestling. Mr. Finney came back to teach and coach at Gilman, got a master's degree at Harvard, and then was headmaster from 1968 to 92. We loved and respected him so much, not because he was a great athlete, but because of how he carried himself. He never spoke of his own accomplishments. He talked softly. He led through his kind and thoughtful actions. He was modeling core values long before schools even talked about core values. He was truly selfless, and he led the effort to racially and religiously diversify the student body long before other schools in Baltimore did so. If there were a Headmaster Hall of Fame or a Mount Rushmore of Headmasters, Mr. Finney would be a first ballot unanimous selection. In the evenings, he would walk around campus with his wife and the family dog, and he would pick up trash. And he'd do the same thing all day long as he walked around the school, picking up trash. That day in assembly, he walked in and said something that I have not forgotten. In fact, I've thought about it almost every day since then. I was 15 then, and I'm 42 now, so it's been 27 years. The auditorium was filled. It was an all-boys school. We had coordinate classes with the two girls' schools next door. But the, the auditorium was filled with boys that day, about 400 of us, plus teachers. And Mr. Finney walked in, and he was holding a big black trash bag filled with trash. And we could tell that he was agitated before he even started talking. And we were quiet before he even started talking. He turned the bag of trash over, and things came spilling out onto the floor. Paper, soda cans, candy wrappers, all over the stage. And this is what he said. Boys, there is far too much trash on campus. I found all this trash last night on my walk. There are three kinds of citizens, he said. The third class citizen is the one who leaves trash around and never cleans up. The second class citizen does not litter himself, but he walks by and never picks up others' trash. The first class citizen is the one who does not litter himself, and he picks up other people's trash even when no one's looking. We need more first class citizens on this campus. We can do better, boys. Dismissed. The assembly was suddenly over, and we shuffled out silently, saddened that we had disappointed Mr. Finney. I can tell you that our campus was extremely clean after that. And Mr. Finney regularly returned to this notion of citizens once or twice a year. Third class citizens leave trash. Second class citizens neither leave it nor pick it up. And first class citizens pick it up. At first, I thought he was just talking about trash on campus. But then as I got older, I realized he was talking about something bigger, something much more important than soda cans and candy bar wrappers. He was talking about how you treat people, how you interact with your school, and how you approach life. Do you look out only for yourself? Do you take shortcuts? Do you remain neutral and just simply plod along with the masses? Or do you actually try to make something better, to help others, and to help create something special? And here is the beauty of first, second, and third class citizens. No one puts you in a category. You put yourself in a category. And it doesn't matter if you're a freshman or a senior a new employee, or a 40-year teacher. And it doesn't matter if you play sports or don't play sports, if you're an artist or not an artist, if you're a straight-A student or you struggle for Cs. None of those things matter when it comes to how you act, how you treat others, and what class of citizen you decide you will be. 
we will all make mistakes, myself included. No one is perfect, and we will all continue to grow and develop. However, I do know this. If we all strive to be first-class citizens this year, we will accomplish great things together. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Martiri. At this point, I'm going to ask the seniors to all stand and turn and face the audience, please. So last night